Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you raised up this fallen world. 
Teach us whom you have rescued from endless death to have the fullness of eternal joy. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 40. To whom will you compare me to, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them by their na- by, all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak? O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively Psalms 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their their grain and wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is is now, now, and and will will be be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet been appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Let us rise. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. 
And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of, of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. Stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may... You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three phrases tonight. They forgot, do not forget, and the promise. They forgot. The people of Judah forgot. They forgot who they were, where they came from, and who is their God. They forgot that he sees all, he hears all, and he knows all. This is apparent to us when God says to Isaiah, What do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. The people of Judah found themselves exiled from their land. Many of them were taken as captives by the Babylonians around the year 597 BC. They were hard-headed and hard-hearted people. When the times were good and the harvest was plentiful, they refused God. They pushed him aside. 
They did not want him, and they felt that they no longer needed him. Part of their hard-headedness showed when a little over 120 years prior to their exile, they saw Israel, the northern kingdom, being invaded and the people exiled by the Assyrians. If you remember the history of Israel, the kingdom split around 925 BC, thus creating two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. Israel refused God and he stepped away from them, letting them have their way. Now the kingdom of Judah not only had protection, but guidance from God. But when they turned away from him, they lost it all. But God did not forget them. He sent them Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah spent years trying to get them, get the people to turn back to God to refuse the easy ways of the earthly gods, to refuse child sacrifices, and to turn away from the temple prostitutes of Baal. But it was like trying to stop a child from running into that proverbial brick wall. Sin had taken over their hearts and their minds. Satan had gotten his way with them. They made decisions based on selfishness and fear of other nations, instead of basing their decisions on a loving fear of God. They forgot who he is, so he let them have their way. Do not forget. In the first lesson, we find Isaiah is writing God's word to the exiles. He wants to remind his people that he alone is God and that he was not defeated by the gods of Babylon when Judah fell. He wants to give his people hope. But he first has to admonish them for forgetting that he is God, the same God who created all things, who made the covenant with Abraham, who delivered his people from slavery, who led them by a pillar of cloud and fire through the wilderness, who gave them the promised land, who gave them the strength and the power to defeat their enemies, and much more. They forgot who God is. They put their trust in other gods and on themselves. So it must be asked, will we forget who God is? Will we push him to one side? What will be our God? Martin Luther tells us that anything that we put our faith and trust in, anything which the heart relies on, is our God. So what is it that your heart relies on? What is your God? Is it God the Father who gave his only begotten Son? Or have you made someone or something your God? Yes, we are in the Easter season. Yes, Christ rose from the dead. But what caused him to die in the first place? It is because of our selfishness, our greed, our lust, our coveting heart, and our desire to play God. It is all of our sins which put Christ on the cross. It was us that made him cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because of us that he died on that old rugged cross. After he died, they brought him down. They cleaned his body. They wrapped him in linen. And they laid him in the tomb. But that was not the period like you find at the end of a sentence. That was not the ending. On the third day in the morning, when the women who had faithfully followed him went to put spices on his body, what did they find? They found an empty tomb. It was empty because Christ has risen. 
He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Do not forget that, my dear brothers and sisters. That empty tomb is the assurance of our forgiveness. The promise. We find the Easter promise in the latter part of the first lesson. Verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. But if we want strength, we must be patient, my dear brothers and sisters. We must be patient. For God works on his time not ours. Why do I mention patience? We find it in verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. When waiting for God, when waiting for Christ, do not forget that when you wait, you are saying to the world that you have confidence in God, that you have confidence in in Christ. You are saying that you have hope in Him. Have faith that in Christ's death you have the forgiveness of sins. We don't find forgiveness in His resurrection. We find it in His death. For He is the Lamb who was slain for the forgiveness of sins. But we rejoice all the more because Christ has risen He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Through his forgiveness, you shall find that you will be mounted up with wings like eagles. But that is not the only promise we are given. We're given the promise that through our baptism, we become a child of God, marked with the seal of Christ, washed in his blood. We baptize as we are commanded, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When each person of the Holy Trinity is spoken, water is poured on the head of the baby, of the teenager, or of the adult. It does not matter how old the person is, we rejoice all the same to see them become a child of God. They become a brother or sister through Christ receiving the forgiveness of sins, the eternal mark of Christ. For those who are yet to be baptized, speak to Pastor Sam. We want nothing more than to see you baptized. And if you should ever have someone tell you that you must be baptized again, leave them. They are not following scripture. Our Lord Jesus Christ never said anything of multiple baptisms, nor did he put a stipulation that it must be a Baptist, Catholic, Calvinist, Methodist, Presbyterian, or Lutheran baptism. There was not, nor is there, an asterisk. He did not say that X denomination is the only valid baptism. So long as you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, it is a lasting baptism. It was done as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. So if you are a baptized child of God, again, baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, come to the table. Come with your sinful hearts and empty hands, for that is all we have to offer Christ. What does he give us in return? We receive his body and blood. We were given that promise when he shared the Last Supper with his disciples. He said to them, take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. The bread and the wine are not symbols. They are not transfigured into him. He comes to us in the host and in the cup. He He does not raise us up spiritually to commune with him in heaven as the Calvinists teach. He comes down to us. With the words of institution, we find him here in the bread and in the wine. 
when we receive him here at the table, we receive the forgiveness of sins, the medicine of immortality. Let it fill your heart with joy and let your mind be at peace. When you leave the table, know that you have received Christ. That is a promise that we are given. What should you take away from today's sermon? Do not be like the people of Judah. Do not forget who God is, what he can do, and what he has done. Do not live your lives as though he has not given you the greatest gift of all, his son, Jesus Christ. Do not let your hearts embrace false gods, for they will only disappoint you. Remember the promises made that Christ has died for your sins, that with the water and the word, you become a child of God. And through the bread and the wine, you receive Jesus Christ. So go out into the world and let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page five in your bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with the Lord Jesus Christ for the unity and renewal of his church on earth, for bishops Eaton and Smith, for Francis, Bartholomew, and all bishops, especially those who have gone astray, for all pastors, including Samuel Zumwalt, Marvin Shedler, Robert Coupler, Peter Hoyer, Michael Bergbauer, Joel Kettner, and Carl Voges, for our parish deacon, Robert Shivers, for all church workers and musicians, for Stephen ministers, for the people of God, and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, crucified for our salvation and raised bodily from the dead so that your Holy Spirit may raise our bodies from the dead to share with all the faithful your eternal life and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit's work in word and sacraments, we may be called to daily repentance and thus live in your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will through your son's saving death, set your church free from this dying world's dynamic quest for the power and glory that belongs to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray that all our neighbors may be drawn by the witness of our lives to the water of holy baptism, and so be made new in your son Jesus' saving death and joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for Isolus and Jay Glacier on the day of their baptism and for all life born and unborn. Guard and protect all pregnant women and their babies. We give you thanks for the birthdays of Donna Sigmund, Ken Slocum, and Dale Stanberry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessings upon engaged couples including Gabriella Staple and Andrew Sheridan, and upon husband and wives, that they may love and serve each other as Christ loves and serves his bride, the church. We give you thanks for all those celebrating wedding anniversaries, including Pastor Peter and Maggie Hoyer, and Pastor Joel and Judy Kettner. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray healing for Lucy Harmonious, Tina Medlin, Emily Coupler Burke, Donna Adams, Marty and Frank Felter, Todd and Tracy Dornell, Dennis Janet Hall, Ed Ludiker, Maggie Hoyer, Earlene Carlisle, Elaine Willow, Sheila Leach, Alexander Schwartz, Arthur and Barbara Moore, John Tullius, William Longhorn, Steve Laughlin. Carol Kaminsky, George Taft, Sarah Schneider, Albert Rossetti, Howard and Lonnie Boyerman, Eris Moles, Cindy Harms, Wanda Valentino, Scott Howell, Vic Weidman, David Reese Miller. For our shut-ins, for all who are suffering, and for the dying and the grieving, especially the Glaser family at the death of Al's father, and for all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For John Williams. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, you see the real us behind the masks we wear in public and know our every weakness. 
Grant us grace joyfully to receive the true body and most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, knowing that in him we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. Welcome and good evening. In your pews or chairs, there are black folders. Please take a moment to sign in. If you're planning to commune tonight, be sure to check that you are communing. There's a place on the form to check you are communing. Grief group is tomorrow and every second Sunday at 1230. The young adult group is meeting tomorrow at 1230 for lunch and a movie. And uh, if uh, anyone here has not let uh, Deacon Robert know about that, be sure to let him know tonight at the door. Our new disciples class, which is for those new to the Lutheran Church or maybe even new to Christianity, is Saturday the 27th of April from 9 to noon. There are no strings attached to attend, but it is part of the process for joining St. Matthew's. The new member orientation that is designed uh, both for those who are transferring to us from other Lutheran churches, as well as those who previously completed our new disciples class, that orientation is Saturday, May the 25th from 9 to 11.30. If you're uh, interested in attending one or both, be sure to contact Donna in the church office uh, so that we know you're coming. There is a church picnic scheduled for the last Sunday of the month, April the 28th. It will be inside in the McSween Center. Uh, the fellowship team will be providing burgers and hot dogs, and you will be asked to bring sides and desserts. Uh, we need you to sign up. There's an easel at the far end of the commons. If you would sign up that you're attending, how many will be attending with you, and also what side or dessert you would like to bring. Please mark that. Take care of that quickly for us. Uh, we've been gathering money during Lent for Pan de Vida, the ministry with the poor in Ecuador. This weekend is the last weekend to get those gifts in because we are now already starting to collect for Mother's Day and that ministry through First Fruits. So last weekend for gifts uh, to Pan de Vida, and all you have to put is uh, hunger or Lent offerings on the, on the memo line, and they'll go to Pan de Vida. Thank you so much for your attention. There are other announcements in the bulletin. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please greet one another with God's peace.
Let us pray. Gracious Father, free us from our hopeless dreams by enlisting us as partners in your gracious will. Receive our offerings as investments in your work that we may share in your certain victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, Pastor. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, to give him thanks praise. and praise. We give you thanks, dear Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot, and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread, and giving thanks to you He said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his holy incarnation, his life, death, and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. We ask in now your Holy Spirit, upon these gifts of your church, gather into one all who share this, the true body, and the most precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. May this your body strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. 
What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the cup of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from all my enemies. May this your blood strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. We will receive in both kinds tonight. The common cup will be the second cup. The first cup is the intinction cup into which you dip the host. The second cup is the common cup from which you drink. Deacon, the true body of Christ given into death for you. George, the true body of Christ given into death for you. And his most precious blood shed for you for the remission of sin. Amen. And his most precious blood shed for you for the remission of sin. Amen.
Let us rise. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you come in this holy food to show that through you, though you died, you were also raised. Preserve our excitement and thus our encouragement as we recognize you in the breaking of bread. You are the Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. I will strive to pray daily, worship weekly, read the Bible, serve at and beyond St. Matthew's, be in relationship to encourage spiritual growth in others, and give of my time, talents, and resources. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you in his light and truth and love. Amen. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.